Hello? So we're going to start talking about quantizing our fields. So up to this point, we've just been talking about classical fields. And now we're going to quantize them. So how do we do that? Uh, basically, uh, just like we had in ordinary quantum mechanics, to quantize things, we just took our uh, coordinates and momenta and we turned them into operators and we demanded that they satisfy these commutation relations. So uh, commutator of x and p should be, well, i h bar, but here we're using uh, h bar as 1. So the condition is this, and obviously the uh, coordinates and momenta corresponding to the different coordinates, uh, they commute. So hence the delta ij. And the uh, position, different positions, operators all commute, different conjugate momentas commute. And so we just uh, work by analogy here. So now we'll have instead our field and its conjugate momentum should satisfy this relation. So commutator phi of x and pi of y should be delta of x minus y. Uh, so if they're not evaluated at the same point, then the operators commute. So basically our, our fields become operators, um, well, operator valued functions. So they, it assigns an operator to every point. And so these, uh, basically, when we're talking about the same point, the field and its conjugate momentum will satisfy this commutation relation. And then we just have a delta AB because we can have multiple fields. And so we'll only have this uh, non-zero commutation relation if we're talking about uh, a field and its own conjugate momentum. Uh, so then we'll have... Uh, you know, the different fields commute at all points and different conjugate momenta fields commute at all points. So that's fine. And uh, so we're going to be working in the Schrodinger picture. And the only reason I'm saying that is because, so class, when we were talking about classical fields, our fields depended on uh, space time. So, you know, for the four coordinates, time and space. But if we're going to make our um, our fields Schrodinger operators, uh, Schrodinger operators don't depend on time. So they will just become functions of space alone. So that'll be important later. But for now, I want to go back and to our uh, um, classical field, our Klein-Gordon Lagrangian and the Klein-Gordon equation that we get from it. And um, we want to play around with this. We want to solve the Klein-Gordon equation. And we'll see why we're doing that later. Uh, but So basically, what I'm going to do is I can expand my field phi of x and t. And so again, um, I've gone back to talking about classical fields, so our field is a function of x and t. And so we just write it as this inverse Fourier transform. And I'm just going to write uh, this p dot x here as minus pi xi to kind of coincide with our notation when we do derivatives. So we need to compute uh, d mu d mu phi here. And you can notice, so the only term that depends on x is this exponential term. The only term that depends on t will be our uh, Fourier transformed field. So it's easy to, to split up this into the time and space parts. So first we'll want to calculate di phi. And um, so that can easily be seen to just be, we'll get a minus i pi from up here. And then the exponential term is still there. Everything else is the same. And then di di phi will be this. So this time we'll get a um, minus i pi with the i lower. So everything sums 
correctly, you know. And uh, then, uh, yeah, so we'll just combine these two. And so we have an expression for di, di phi. And then I need to calculate d0, d0 phi. And the only thing that depends on time is our phi of p and t. So this will just be, I don't know, we just write double dot over our phi here. And so now we can re we can write down our Clyde Gordon equation. Um, so basically, we'll have uh, d d mu d mu phi here will be this term plus this term. So we'll get a um, you know if we factor every all the uh, operator terms out, we'll have a, a second derivative with respect to time, and we have a minus pi pi here. And then we have our plus m squared from this term. And so this is our equation becomes this. And then we can look at this as being, um, so we want, uh, well, a way to satisfy this, this equation is that for every value p, the coefficient of, um, or the, the integrand vanishes. So, we basically, so this e to the minus i pi xi will never be zero, so we can disregard that. And we can, we can commute that over here. I should probably just have written this all acting on the field here. Uh, but anyway, so we're basically led to this condition, where I've written um, pi pi. So pi with i lower will, is minus p. So that cancels with this minus, so we get a plus. And so we can write our equation like this. So phi, so here uh, in this equation, p is fixed. And so we're just saying that for every value of p to, to make this uh, total expression zero, we just need phi to phi of p and t to satisfy this equation. Uh, but this equation is just the equation of a harmonic oscillator with frequency, I'll write omega p, um, square root of p squared plus m squared. And so that tells us that we can write our 5p as a, um, or we can expand our field as a, as a sum of harmonic oscillators, uh, one for each value of p, and they will have frequency of omega p. And so why do we care about that? Why is that useful? And the reason why it's useful is because we know, you know, when we quantize our, so if we look at our Klein Gordon Lagrangian, you know, we want to quantize this. And then the next thing we would want to do is find its spectrum, find its eigenvalues and eigenstates. And you know, generally, that's kind of a hard problem. Even for the you know, in uh, just ordinary quantum mechanics, trying to find the eigenstates of the harmonic oscillator is difficult. Uh, but if we define raising and lowering operators like this, then it becomes very easy to find the eigenstates. And so the point of all this is that since our we've seen that we can expand our classical field in terms of the sum of simple harmonic oscillators, we should be able to quantize each of those, basically treat each of those individual oscillators just like we did in ordinary quantum mechanics or in a similar way. And uh, that will, so we'll be able to quantize our field easily that way. And not only that, but it, once we've done that, it'll be easy to find the eigenstates of our field. So basically, we, we have these expressions from ordinary quantum mechanics. And um, so x is 1 over square root of 2 omega, a plus a dagger, p is this. And our raising and lowering operators satisfy this commutation relation. Uh, so this 1 is an identity operator, really. And we're just going to demand that our, so if, you know, x is a harm, satisfies 
a harmonic oscillator equation, then we write it like this. Well, 5p, we found, satisfies a harmonic oscillator equation. So we're going to write it like this. And the frequency will be omega p, and we'll have... So if you remember, for basically, you know, if we had a two-dimensional harmonic oscillator, we would have an ax and an ay. Uh, hopefully you've solved problems uh, like that before. So since we have an, a harmonic oscillator for each value of p, we're going to label our a's. So we'll have an a and an a dagger for each value of p. So that's why I've labeled them here. And then similarly for our conjugate momentum field, I will have this. And then analogous to our, this commutation relation between our raising and lowering operators, we'll have this condition instead. So um, the only major difference here is that we have this 2 pi cubed. So this delta function of p minus q just tells us that um, only the raising and lowering operators associated with the same uh, momentum of, uh, will not commute. So that's just like, you know, a AX and a Y dagger in the 2D harmonic oscillator would commute. So that's kind of, this is just the more, just the generalization of that. But what's really weird is this 2 pi cubed. That's kind of not something we had before. And basically this is, um, you know, it's with the benefit of hindsight. It's, <laughs> I'm sure maybe when people were first did this, they didn't have that term there, but then found that it's either necessary or convenient to have it there. So we'll just have to keep that in mind. So I'll stop here and then we'll see what we can do with all these expressions in the next video.